So I've got my tarp in place. I will help catch any of the texture that cracks off. Um, I'm removing the corner bead. Uh, it's attached by staples and nails. Once I get it started, I can usually hook my hammer in on the edge and start prying it out enough where it gives me some more leverage. Uh, the corners are pretty good. There's some gaps in there that I could get the hook of the hammer put in there. Um, that's a new run, so getting it initially started, kind of have to beat in, get underneath uh, the corner bead. Um, there, there's some nails that get hooked in the corners. Um, there you can see where I'm hooking up at the bottom again. And this is kind of a good way you could peel it back and then get your hammer hooked under there to, to pry away. There, there were some staples and nails. I'm getting pretty close to the mirror right there, so I kind of wanted to be careful um, with my angle of the hammer as I'm prying against the sheetrock. I didn't want to like do anything that was going to pop that mirror away from the wall. Scraping the excess caulking off of the window is pretty important too, so you want to make sure that nothing's going to hold the jam away. After removing a lot of the sheetrock, I can see that where the sheetrockers have used the sheetrock shims, um, they actually did a really good job um, putting the sheetrock shims in will help bring out the sheetrock where there's a better reveal around the window. There's been a combination of both nails and screws that the sheetrockers use. So here I'm like prying them up uh, instead of grabbing my drill and unscrewing the screws, I just pop them off with the hammer. I'm um, getting any of the excess staples out of the way. Using the 14 and one putty knife comes in pretty handy. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different things you can use it for. So it's got a lot of like a little hooks and edges to it. Um, so I kind of use it as a saw <laughs> sometimes here that can work the sheetrock back so it keeps it flush with the framing. Um, nothing's protruding out, making it tight from when I slide the window jam in. Right here, I swear they used a hundred staples. In some spots, the sheetrockers put some extra plywood in 
so that they could bring, again, the reveal better around the window. Um, at this part on the top, it really wasn't interfering. Once I got the measurements of the jam uh, put in there, it wasn't going to keep it anything less. So I was able to keep the reveal around the windows. Um, so I didn't really worry about tearing out all of the uh, plywood that was ex added extra. Um, on this window, on, not on this side, but on the other side, uh, they did put a layer of plywood. Um, I wanted to get that out of the way because it did interfere with the reveal um, for when I was going to put the jam in. At this point, this is when I start ripping off that plywood.
time for the cleanup, uh, taking my screwdrivers out, keeping that tarp in place. Um, I'm going to use the tarp as a dustpan, um, so I'm just bringing it all down towards an edge, and then I'll put that in my garbage can. At this point, I'm stealing the homeowner's job. He was upset at me that I started sweeping and cleaning it up, but I wanted to make sure that I got all that sheetrock dust out of the tile, um, the grout line, uh, the vacuum came in handy. Starting to lay out for the window sill, so I'll go to the edge of the window, make a line. That'll be the inside of my notch for my window sill. Um, I'm measuring over for the jam distance, which is 11 16 three quarter of an inch, and then uh, the casing is three and a half. And then I usually want to go three quarter of an inch past the casing, measuring from inside of the notch to the inside of the notch here. Then I'm going to add a seven and a half. Um, that's my figure that I got for the casing and then the overhang that I want for my sail. So then I just add that to the overall. Measuring the depth here so I know what to rip the jams for. And then here I'm measuring the height of the styles. Minus three quarter of an inch for the window sill. Here I'm measuring for the header. So it's 35 and a half, so I minus an inch and a half. Gives me 34 inches for the header. So I'll write that up there.